So today, Dr. Jill Stein requested a recount in the state of Wisconsin, and she intends to do so in each of the state of Michigan and Pennsylvania, assuming her campaign can raise enough money to cover a set of arbitrary costs and donations to the campaign. Now, question number one is, why Jill Stein? And that's a little bit unclear. It's certainly not the case that Jill Stein is going to win the election if she gets a recount. That's not what's going to happen. However, Greens do support open voting machines, open source, uh, auditable logs, and everything else like that, and have gone to bat for it before. In 2004, they pursued this in Ohio, which resulted both in machines being no longer used and a bunch of, and someone getting thrown in jail for election fraud. So uh, it is absolutely the case that the Greens do have a platform for open voting. Uh, initially, I thought this might be a shadow move by Clinton, right? Like, Clinton is in a position where she just yelled at Trump for saying he wouldn't accept the vote. Clinton can be seen as a sore loser while Stein has no chance to win, so, like, she can't just be a sore loser. And the donations are also being made to the Jill Stein for President campaign. During the campaign, of course, Jill Stein raised just $3.5 million compared to Clinton raising more than $350 million. Um, I'm not sure exactly when the limits on donations resets, but I do know there is an annual limit or a limit of some kind on individuals. And so, you know, I, I, it's possible that that's one of the things. However... Um, um, Stein was explicitly dismissive towards the Clinton campaign and, and the Democrats. Uh, specifically, she said, Democrats do not act to protect the vote even when there's dramatic evidence of tampering, which is bullshit because there is not dramatic evidence of tampering. But but whatever, that's Stein being Stein. So that's a, a pretty bullshit position if she was working with them. So she probably isn't. So I don't really know why Jill Stein, other than, you know, uh, it, it's a thing. But the other thing is there were actually reports this week of, you know, potential for hacking or people who looked at statistics and said this looks wrong and so it leaves a little bit of sense uh, this is a thing that would happen um uh this will not change the vote Statistical anomalies, as reported in the, the press and everything else like that, they're nothing. They're, they're, they're based on, you know, uh, electoral, like electronic machines versus paper ballots. They don't make any, like, they don't, they're not meaningful because those aren't the things that mattered. If you control for education, there is no difference in this. It is not going to change the vote. People thinking they're changing the vote is silly. Uh, and, and if you want to change the actual outcome of, of something about the election in favor of the Democrats, uh, donate to the Foster Campbell for Senate campaign if you want to change in favor of the Republicans, donate to his opponent, who I think is Kennedy? I don't know exactly. Um, that's the best chance there is to affect that, because there's still a Senate race, which is ongoing. The vote isn't for another two weeks. It's in Louisiana. Check it out. There's a link in the description below to the Foster Campbell campaign, if that's something you're interested in seeing. Um, and with limited ability to donate to anything, it makes sense to save money for causes likely to do more good for the world. The ACLU, Planned Parenthood, the EFF, etc. Um, however, vote machines are garbage. Uh, unlike several failure and tolerant crises, there is no codified set of federal regulations governing the quality of electronic voting machines, uh, says Emily Gorsensky, who reviewed a bunch of voting machine federal audits uh, earlier today. This is how she spent her day after Thanksgiving. Voting machines have routinely been found to be easy to modify and hack remotely. The voluntary federal guidelines set almost no real constraints. The testing labs basically act as manual linters, like just looking for code style and not as meaningful code comparison or review. Uh, a summary of reviews of voting machines was put together earlier today. There's a link to that in the description below as well. Um, and the, the results are published on GitHub. In no case was more than 10% of the code for a voting machine reviewed manually, in only one case out of dozens was the vote counting and auditing code examined in particular. There's strong evidence based on the requirements that testing labs are looking at source code, that, that, that the, the labs that are developing these do not do source code management or automated deployment or shipping or anything else like that. In some cases, voting machines were found to have shipped the wrong version of the software because of mistakes like this. Plus, the majority of states don't even bother with it. They don't even have laws. Um, and so, like, in layman's terms, voting machines are, like, you know, uh, have a lot of components that have to be tested, and all the electronic components and physical cases and locks and everything else like that have engineering quality standards that people have to work and meet. Um, but, but the software basically doesn't get tested. Uh, software can introduce lots of failures. It can change a vote. It can change. A, it can count a vote twice or not count votes at all. It can lose votes. So one would expect that the voting machine software is thoroughly checked, but it's just not the case. So the, the standards govern code style. The certification only looks at code style. There is no real meaningful check on this. So voting machines are crap. And therefore, like, checking these seems like a good idea. Given the increase in rhetoric and actual cyber attacks over recent years, we should be more aggressive about recounting. The election standards for recounts tend to favor recounts where votes are very close. This is sensible, but those standards haven't been updated as elections have moved to be more vulnerable. They've moved to electronic voting machines, and, and we haven't had an increase in, in cyber attacks. Um... 
And But voting machines do keep paper records and audit trails and everything else like that. These checksums, the paper audit trails that the electronic voting machines leave, are similar to the hash sums distributed with software, which you should also check to ensure that Russians haven't given you the wrong software to download. And I will say that Wisconsin does seem to have a general auditing process for their electronic vote machines that does partial counts and other things like that, so maybe this isn't exactly the way I think of it. But, but we should check this more often. Like, recounting votes shouldn't be one thing you do every never. It should be something that we do regularly, at least in part to make sure that machines are working as expected. There is some concern over the spending on this this thing. So the amount requested from Jill Stein keeps going up. I think practically speaking, they did not expect to get $2.5 million in donations. It is worth noting that the Jill Stein campaign has received more than $5.3 million in donations in the past week, when over their entire two-year campaign, they only received $3.5 million. They have received more than 50% more because of this than they did for the entire presidential campaign. Um, there's also been some weird language around it. They didn't include attorney's fees and then they did include attorney's fees and then the costs were low and then they kept going up and they started with a $2.5 million goal and then they went to a $4 million goal and now a $7 million goal and basically it looks like basically they, they thought this was going to be a Kickstarter that got nobody backing it and they were getting $250,000 an hour for two days and just kept kind of trying to cope with that uh, which is a thing I can understand because when I was doing my Extra Life campaign I basically did the same thing, right? So, um, the, and, and realistically... All of this is going to be tracked via FEC filings. We'll be able to look at where she spent the money and look at how it came out. And we have the ability to follow up. So although we can't do anything else about it, if Jill Stein decides to turn around and use this money for herself, we will at least have the ability to follow up with her, chase her down, and not vote for her next time. So as a result of my belief that the recounts are good in general and should be done more often, I donated to support the recount. I did not donate much, and I did this in addition to my existing nonprofit donation schedule, which is more considered. As an effect, this is an entertainment spend. I encourage others to consider doing the same after donating to other nonprofits and causes that have higher likelihood of success or fit your goals or needs. Uh, and uh, I hope and expect the recount to return no difference. It will almost certainly not affect re election results. Uh, expecting otherwise is being foolish, so don't.